Welcome to number four of Raider Art Show. Today we're going to be talking about some two games that happened uh, this past weekend over at the preseason that the Raiders have beat and won uh, to the other NFL team that is happening over at the Allegiant Stadium in LA. Uh, before I get started, make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe below. And you you can also give us a call at 209-809-0195. Nine five, yeah, that's how I say it. Uh, yeah, and uh, you can leave a voicemail, and uh, I'll share it to you in my next show. Uh, see what's going on and what's happening. Now, before I get started with the Raider news, uh, we have some breaking news that is actual breaking news that is going on uh, over at the Utah Amusement Park. That there are some of the men who uh, falls off in the uh, in the uh, rides uh, during that that kind of a time like this past weekends. So uh, this uh, this is the article right here. Um, that I'm going to read this to you. It says, A 32-year-old man died after plunging nearly uh, 50 feet from the chairlift at the Utah Amusement Park on Saturday night, according to the reports. Uh, let's see. Uh, the identified victims was spot by other park goers uh, clinching to the safety bar of the chair on the uh, sky ride at the Lagoon Amusement Park in uh, Farmington before he fell. In the video shot by a witness and uh, sent it to Fox 30, the man uh, appears uh, calm and still as he dangles from the moving chair over the water fountains. Police say the fall does not appear to be uh, intentional. A park spokesperson told the KUTV that there is no reason to believe there was a uh, malfunction with the ride. Um, and this is also what they said, like in the quote, I think the uh, person was saying over at the amusement park, she said that the, the Skyride has been operating the lagoon without incident in the park since 1972, uh, the spokesperson told the uh, outlets. Every ride in the park undergoes intense safety inspections. Uh, this received an inspection Saturday morning. So, wow, I I cannot believe that man just fall off from the uh, Skyride. You know, he was like, panicking like i i can't even i can't even believe like he was getting like he was not seated in that sky right i just saw that i because like the woman was like thinking like i thought you know i thought she, uh, you know he was a uh professional athletics but uh he wasn't you know like every like some of the people just did not understand who uh don't know who that person is but um uh, yeah it's just this is kind of sad i mean like um when i saw that in my thoughts is just Wow, I, I cannot believe that he just fell over at the Utah Amusement Park. But, uh, you know, if any rides that are, um, you know, hey, I've, you know, if you, sorry, if you have like family or have children that has like the safety rules, uh, you know, they, they might have safety rules over at the uh, amusement park for you, all of you to be safe, you know, not just to do anything just like that man, you'll end it up like him. But, um, yeah, so I just, I don't know what to say about this man. I mean, I can't believe that he just passed away and he's just fall off by uh, accident but um yeah this is this is this is kind of a crazy stuff that you know people do nowadays i mean they're just doing stupid stuff like going to uh some places that just make dumb crap and sense like they just can't even follow some of those rules and uh that's why you know i kind i also kind of heard like they uh people would say that you know if people don't follow those rules they would be banned like from like any amusement park or something that you go through behind their backs you know it just not getting permission that that that's kind of like uh prohibited so uh yeah i mean that's 
this is what I thought of, like, what I see in that article, and especially that news. So, uh, yeah, so, uh, sending condolences to his family or friends, uh, I'm not sure, like, any, I, I never, like, seen any of his, uh, family friends, like, before, but, um, yeah, it's kind of sad, you know, uh, rest in peace to that man, uh, the, thir uh, 32 year old man who, uh, falls off from the, uh, sky ride in the, uh, Utah amusement park in the lagoon. So, last year, uh, during COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we all know that the wildfire was going on over at the California where smokes, like, the big smoke all, all over around the, uh, uh, San Francisco, it's like big, huge smoke that was happening, and some of the people that passed away, uh, especially animals and stuff. Well, once again, this year in 2021, the state of California just cannot catch the break because there is another wildfire going on in the east of California over at the Tahoe area, uh, where that happening around August, uh, August 24, 2021. Now, uh, there has been an explosion over at the wildfire in that in the Tahoe. So, um, uh, pretty much like the the Caldor fire, which has like more burn over like the 117 thousand acres over 10 days, and the remaining 9% contains as a Tuesday's force to closure of school in the Washoe Country. I mean, county school district and several fights. I mean, flights in and out of the Rhino Tahoe uh, International Airport. So, uh, yeah, pretty sad. Like I, I for that uh, wildfire just keeps going on and on for years, like couple years, like in California. So they can just cannot catch it, like any sort of sense. Like they cannot stand it for that wildfire. I mean, like there's like cows and animals that were burned by the wildfires. Like you know, people had passed away or like, you know, house was like burned down and they can't find some uh, like somewhere to live. And, you know, they decided that they have like no choice to like leave California to uh, some of the different countries in the uh, United States. So, uh, yeah, this is kind of sad. And, uh, you know, I just don't know what to say because like last year, like the big smoke over at the San Francisco or Bay Area, it was like more orange and like like, all the smoke that was coming out of, the, you know, the sky, and just, like, I remember when I was waking up in the morning, some of, like, the Good Morning America Today show, and, uh, like, ABC News, they were talking about this kind of a wild, wildfire going on in California, and, um, uh, some, like, dramatic stuff that was going on over at, like, the, in the north of, uh, California, so, uh, yeah, I mean, like, for me, I, I cannot, I can't describe it, like, it's kind of hard, like, every summer, like, when, it's, when it starts happening, like, in August or somewhere in that, that kind of month, but, um, it's the same thing with the, uh, when, like, the weather just started going, like, 100% of, uh, wait, 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 how do I describe it? Like, 100 degrees, uh, weather in the sun, like, just spotted out these wildfires, and, uh, me, uh, I, I try not to, like, catch it you know, from that, but, uh, I, I just, we, all, we always keep it moving forward, if Cal, uh, California and the mayor is doing great of what they, uh, what they do in the community to stop the wildfires, to do anything, uh, uh, particular, and so that's my opinion to what, like, some of the things that's going on in the wildfires, and pretty much is this disaster, and they also even said, like, they, they haven't been, uh, destroying, like, Five hundred, uh, five hundred and fifty-seven buildings. Um, pretty much is just kind of messed up. I mean, like houses and buildings. It's just ridiculous. Like if you're living into the uh, mountains around the East California side in the forest. Um, pretty much, I, I, I don't know what to do for you, but uh, pretty much people would be safe over there if they were camping and, you know, like doing some uh, great stuff and fun time over there. It's just uh. Just be careful, you know. I I know I know it's kind of a hard for wildfires in California, but hopefully next year and the next summer, uh, that will not happen again, because if it keeps going, uh, for me in my opinion, um, I don't know what to say about it. And speaking of summer, um, me recently, I pretty much had a great time, you know, going over to the uh, Casa de Fruta in Santa Clara County. Uh, pretty much every like every summer that I always go into and uh, that place is pretty amazing it's like warm and soft uh, great move over there over at the Casa de Fruta uh, yeah it's just pretty much like when I go when I when we go over there like just uh, like in the morning or afternoon uh, pretty much we like we 
go and hang out and just you know having a regular good times uh over there for the uh parks and stuff and uh i remember like always going to the like every shop uh in casa de fruta for me like personally i go like into the uh, chocolate candies and you know buying yourself like an ice cream and just regular life that is you know what families do in uh personally so uh yeah for uh casa de fruta is just pretty amazing like um pretty much is just awesome you know during the pandemic it just doesn't stop us uh pretty much you know people weren't even like wearing masks i mean some people are wearing masks but not really but uh they just don't have no like no rules and restrictions going on because uh in 2020 last year it was just pretty much we can't even go like anywhere in the summer because of the uh pandemic but uh yeah um yeah every like every summer um me, you know, like every family, you know, we always go there to Casa de Fruta just to enjoy ourselves before, like, we head over to uh, Watsonville Beach to, you know, just chill out and just having a great summertime just to be in the beach uh, for me because I, I like going to the beach every summer and just uh, in Watsonville and just having a good time and uh, spend my time, you know, I pretty much I always enjoy myself spending my time in the water just, you know, uh, relaxing, cool surf theme, but for me, personally, I don't even know how to surf, you know, maybe one day, I, you know, I'll have somebody to, you know, help me out with the, uh, surfing boards and stuff, like, mini, uh, surfing boards, but, uh, even professional, like, uh, surf boards that I, I get into, like, one day if I can, uh, pretty much I'll be more professional and be more, like, muscling, athletic person to, you know, be surfing in the, uh, Watsonville, uh, Watsonville Beach, Sunset Beach, I would say, uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the favorite thing just to go, yeah, but yeah, that's the, uh, favorite thing just to go to the, uh, Casa de Fruta before going to Watsonville, like, every summer, that, that's just my, you know, personal life, you know, and, uh, also, um, speaking of that, uh, Santa, uh, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, yeah, I kind of like that place over there, uh, Musman Park's doing great, and, uh, you know, that kind of a part-time summer, uh, pretty much I went over, th- uh, over there, uh, from Watsonville to, us, uh, uh, Santa Cruz, just to drive there, just to check, uh, what's going on, and, uh, pretty much it's just the atmosphere for family and friends to just to hang out and, uh, enjoying rides, and, uh, you know what's special, like, the Santa, uh, Santa Cruz is something special for me, because, uh, I, I really enjoy going into the boardwalks, uh, area just to enjoy myself, and, uh, walking around, and, uh, just to walk around generally, I, I pretty much have, amazing time and good feelings growing up over at the uh, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and so me I, I wear shirts of Santa Cruz like every day for me personally because uh you know I I do have some of the Santa Cruz shirts that were has some different designs like a, a original one and a different designs by some uh, artists I can't even describe who designed some of these uh, Santa Cruz amazing Santa Cruz sh- uh, shirt yeah and, uh, and for me you know I like, personal, you know, I, I wear, like, black clothes every day besides Raider clothes, and uh, pretty much I, it's just, it kind of feel like I still represent Raiders all day uh, outside of the uh, football, and so, uh, for me, like, my clothes in, in my uh, personal uh, black clothes, it's something, like, something different. Like, I wear, like, black Santa Cruz shirt, uh, original shirt a lot, and, uh, and it's just kind of, it's in my blood to me. Like, me, like, um... You know, it's more like uh, I'm always passionate for what I for what I do for black uh, black clothes every day. But uh, I didn't want to like announce people about me what I what I wear. But uh, that's just my uh, personal opinion and uh, personally what I why I wear every day. So uh, yeah, San, uh, Santa Cruz. Uh, I enjoy rides. I do like the cave and stuff and uh, roller coasters in there and. Uh, uh, Splash Mountain, you know, not Splash Mountain, I forgot what's its name, it's, it's a ride where, you know, when you go up to the, uh, green, uh, some of the, I can't describe it, but, like, it, you get splashed, I, I really enjoy that ride as well, but, uh, and, uh, Giant Dipper, that's, that's one of my favorite, you know, that's my, uh, my personal favorite, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I mean, Santa Cruz, I, I cannot just, uh, I cannot even stop loving that place. I mean, I really do love it. Like, every summer I go there and just besides Watsonville, uh, pretty much them what I enjoy myself. And, uh, I think, yeah, I think a couple, a uh, couple years ago, I, uh, the last time I went to, uh, Santa Cruz in 2019 when the 
when the weather, you know, the bad weather was going on over at the uh, Santa Cruz. But, uh, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, me personally, I really enjoy Santa Cruz. Okay, so that's all we have for the uh, regular news. And now we're going into the Raider news that was happening this past couple weeks. Uh, before we get into that, we're going to take a commercial break. Uh, we'll be back to uh, discuss about the Raiders and, uh, in that situation. So uh, be right back and don't go away. The Raider Art Show is sponsored by Harrow Artist. Log on to HarrowGeorge.com. Harrow Artist features notable of the amazing comments, drawing videos, covers, and more. Make sure you subscribe to Harrow's YouTube channel called The Harrow Network, where you will get drawing video updates from Harold himself. Check out Harrow's social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, at Harrow Artist, of course. Log on to HaroldGeorge.com. Nation, it's Raider Puppet coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, home of the Las Vegas Raiders. Hey, check out Raider Art YouTube channel for the Raider Art YouTube show. Check him out for all the latest news information regarding the Raiders. Check out the Raider Art show on YouTube, the Raider Art YouTube channel. Raider Puppet, Raider Nation, out. Well, thank you, Raider Puppet. I might have you on the reports and skits later on, okay, buddy? All right, getting into the Raider news. Uh, recently, this past August, I mean, this month in August, um, the Raiders got down to the 80-man roster limit Tuesday by waving veteran wide receiver Marcel Aitman and rookie defensive tackler Darius Stills and putting veteran uh, linebacker Darren Lee on injured reserve. The destination of Stills came with the injury distinction, um, which means if he clears waivers, the Raiders can uh, bring him back and add him to the injured reserve list or work out an injury settlements with him. The former West uh, Virginia player signed with the Raiders as an undrafted free agent but began training camp on the non-football injury list. He made his debut on Saturday against the Rams. Aitman was the uh, seventh round pick of the Raiders in 2018 and spent the past three seasons with the clubs, mostly on the practice squad while appearing to the 18 games and catching 20 passes for the 270 yard and uh, yard line and the uh, touchdowns. Aitman caught a touchdown pass in Saturday wins over the Rams, but faced an uphill climb earring and a spot on the 53-man roster. If Amon doesn't land with the another team, he is a candidate to the return to the Raiders as a practice squad player. Under the practice, squad rules that carry over from last year, each team can carry 16 players including 6 who have a cure more than 2 seasons. Lee signs during the offseason, has been unable to practice recently and did not suit up against the Rams. By going on injured, reserve at the point, he is ineligible to return this year for the Raiders. Lee either will remain uninjured, reserve, or uh, he and the club can work out an injury settlement. So yeah, uh, to give my opinion about uh, Marcel Lee, uh, Marcel Aitman, um, pretty much he pretty much got an injured uh, last year over at the. Uh, uh, the 2020 season, so uh, he didn't get a chance to play uh, this year for the preseason against the uh, Rams. I uh, don't know what to say about him. Like he didn't, he he didn't get a chance to uh, play this year, or he's not going to be in the roster uh, for this uh, for this season, uh, season's game because uh, of because uh, of his uh, injuries. So uh, if he get a chance, maybe like or not, maybe he might get a chance to play again or. Or else he's, he's going to go to the other NFL teams uh, uh, as much as my opinion that about him. So, uh, for Lee, I pretty much, he pretty much got an injury as well. Um, yeah, I can't say much about him, like, getting, like, injured while he was playing. You know, I know I know it's hard for him to, you know, play that kind of much as he can. But uh, for me, personally, uh, I would go for wide receivers, uh, pretty much like Nate Hobbs, uh, making a mistake. I thought he was, like, a... Uh, wide receivers at that moment but not really i he was he's actually a uh cornerback 
for like the offense or uh, defense. So uh, yeah, as wide receivers, I was going for uh, Josh Jacob, Nate Hobbs, uh, especially because uh, wide receivers, uh, wide receivers is something like special for like the optimistic and uh, being confident for the uh, players uh, to try to catch the ball uh, when uh, Derek Carr throws the ball. Uh, to them, they hopefully just run to like any like yard lines, uh, close into the end zone to try to win the touchdown. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, the ceremony, um, this month over like against the Rams at Allegiant Stadium is pretty much amazing ceremony that the, uh, one, uh, Mark Davis and one of the crew were at the uh, outside of the Allegiant Stadium. We're opening up the uh, ceremony for the cutting the ribbon. And uh, Carlos Santana also was at the ceremony. Uh, he was cutting the ribbons with them. Uh, yeah, he was been joining for the uh, ceremonies for the uh, events. And he he also was even performing at the uh, halftime show for the uh, the Raider game. So uh, that's pretty amazing, amazing special events going on for him. But yeah, uh, the Raiders were been yeah the Raiders were beating the uh, Seahawks was twenty to seven on the score, uh, so that's pretty amazing. And uh, recently, uh, this past Saturday, they were being against the Rams in L. A. It was at uh, the uh, seventeen to sixteen, so uh, pretty amazing score. I mean, like Nehas, pretty much he can do like anything. He just cannot get like the the offense the. LA Rams offense to you know try to throw the ball or do something for that but uh that that's kind of a pretty amazing thing that the, what they do for confidence to try to beat the NFL teams to that hopefully they will allow them to uh score like more touchdowns pretty much it will uh when we beat the uh Niners for uh this Sunday so uh can't wait for that I mean the we hate the 49ers but for me personally I hate the 49ers but obviously I do have some a couple of my friends that are Niners so uh they lost their souls, you know, like Savage say, you know, it, it just kind of hurts so much because they're not even part of the, you know, as Raider fans. In the other news, um, the NFL Las Vegas Raiders announced Monday that the franchise will require fans to provide proof of COVID-19 fascination to attend home games this season at their gleaming new Allegiant Stadium. The vaccine's mandates will go into effect September 13th, the day of the team's first regular season's home game. A Monday night showdown with the Baltimore Ravens. With this move, fans will be allowed to attend home games without wearing masks. The release said, uh, vaccine, no vaccine policy is the first of its kind in the NFL. The Raiders moved from Oakland to Las Vegas last year into Allegiant Stadium, but no fans were allowed to attend games due to the pandemic. Health and safety has always been our number of priority, Raiders owner Mark Davis said. In the statement, after consult, uh, consultations with uh, government Sisolak and other community leaders, this policy ensures that we will be able to operate the full capacity without masks for fully vaccinated fans for the entire seasons. The new rule comes from the same day that Nevada government Steve Sisolak announced new measures for large events in the states. Any events held in the venue of 4,000 or more people can either require masks for all attendance or grant masking uh, exceptions for attendance who show proof of the uh, vaccination. Children, uh, children all under 12 and those who are particularly vaccinated must still wear a mask indoors, he says. My goal with today's new policy choice is to provide the private sector more options that comes with the reward for the public, uh, the ability to take off their masks during the uh, concert or game, if they fully fascinated, Sisolak says. Uh, at the press uh, press conference Tuesday, Davis says, in the decision between those two options was easy. I said last night that it was an easy decisions over two choices, and why I said that this is we've had four events here that were mask only that you had to wear a mask mask mandates and it's just impossible to uh to the police he says raiders head coach uh john gruden says he also supported the decisions i'll be anxious to see as many raider fans as possible with no mask that is what i'm excited about they can make more noises they weigh but I know it's a touchy uh, subject for a lot of uh, people, but I do support the directions we are heading. And I encourage everybody I know 
to uh, get vaccine, uh, vaccine to uh, come join us, he says. The vaccine's mandates is just a uh, latest in, uh, instance of the NFL using its massive influence to uh, encourage COVID-19 vaccinations, which provide strong protection against the infections and serve illness. Yeah, so uh, to me, in my opinion about the uh, vaccination, uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine uh, is pretty important for all the fans to, you know, go attend in games or concerts. So uh, uh, for the Ravens game, uh, pretty amazing, exciting for the fans. They were going into the Allegiant Stadium for the first time uh, a couple weeks. And, uh, you know, they they were in there in the Allegiant Stadium. Uh, some of the fans were wearing uh, masks, uh, not a lot, but uh, there are some of the other fans were... Um, you know, like a lot of fans were not like wearing a mask. It was pretty amazing. Maybe they have to get the vaccine first before entering the game. So that's impossible. I mean, like uh, they uh, changed that kind of a policy, uh, what the government uh, government has to do with the uh, fans. But uh, hopefully like any like costume fans or uh, regular fans will attend games. They have to make sure they get they have to get like a fax, uh, vaccine before entering. That's the important part. Or else you'll you'll get disease or you know not wearing that mask is impossible, and they also said that uh, you will be banned if you don't wear mask uh, for the uh, Legion Stadium. You'll be like uh, banned for like a year or like something like in that kind of a rules. So that that's kind of ridiculous. I mean, like I can't stand for that rules. I mean that that's just ridiculous to you know come up with that rules for from the, the what the government says in the uh henderson um, or i mean not henderson like in the uh, las vegas so yeah it's just ridiculous and also the uh, tickets prices like i said is this cost a lot of money i mean i i cannot believe it i i suppose it, it was supposed to be going into like the early like a hundred dollars but it didn't like turn worked out but uh most of the, uh, like some of these fans like especially the black hole will be like attending to a uh, stage or casino or other like places to go attend you know watching the game on TV instead of going to the, the Allegiant Stadium. So I have a weird I have a weird feeling like that's gonna happen like this season. So uh, this year of course I mean I that's just ridiculous. I mean like hopefully like next year. If this is something for good for the fans to, you know, have like the ticket, uh, ticket prices to go lower less than a hundred dollars, uh, might be perfect. Uh, hopefully that I can't even trust the government over at the uh, Las Vegas and stuff. It's just ridiculous. Like this is for the state of Nevada. Okay. Uh, I mean, fans are like pumping up for like the Raiders this season, like every Raider nation and the black hole are really pumping up, you know, peace and love and positivity. That's the main thing, main message for me personally. So yeah, that's enough with that being said with the Raider news. Now we're getting into the uh, Ra uh, Raider rants. Uh, this is something I wanted to bring up with someone that I know over the years. Uh, someone that I, I haven't seen since 2012 or 2013 is the uh, this fan right here. The original fan from Oakland uh, is the one and only the Human Logo Shieldhead. Now, uh, Shieldhead is something like special person to me. Uh, his real name is Andrew Carell. Uh, he actually started doing this kind of a costume thing back uh, when the Raiders returned home to Oakland in uh, 1995. When like uh, he he decided to like like create a shield from like the couch, uh, like this big couch or something. Like he would carve a couch for like a couple days and uh, created look like try to look like a shield. Uh, and he stuck his head in it to see if it tested out, and uh, it, that kind of, that looks kind of a fit for him. That that's pretty amazing and really creativity right there for that shield for his head. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he's something special. I mean, I've known him for many years, like as a kid growing up, just seeing him, you know, knowing about his family, uh, his uh, daughters and uh, his son. Pretty amazing thing that he does for like the, the community of the Raider Nation for many years, and he also has a, a company, a production company is called the uh, Daddy Pants Productions, which that's amazing. Like it, it's not like really like a family friendly thing, but uh, it's more like a mature for like any Raider fans to see for like entertainment. But he, uh, pretty much, he does like doing skits, uh, making skits for uh, YouTube a long time ago, uh, before I got started, but. Uh, yeah, pretty amazing stuff that he does for like uh, at Ricky's uh, Raider Head and uh, going to the Raider games to see all the fans and friends for uh, many years. So, uh, so yeah, uh, he currently lives in Colorado, unfortunately, which uh, Bronco sucks though, uh, with his son and uh, pretty much you know what's going on with him. You know, uh, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't even seen him for a long time, like literally. So, uh, if he comes to my show one day. 
I would approve to all of you fans to be a special treat for what he's going to do for me next. So, uh, kudos to uh, Shieldhead. You know, uh, hopefully if one day he comes to Vegas, uh, see him in the uh, Sin City, if you ever Raider fans are in Sin City to see Shieldhead again, uh, kudos. That would be epic for Shieldhead. So, I, I can't believe what he what he's going to do next. So, uh, yeah, I can't wait for that for like this year or uh, next year because, uh, I, yeah, because he, he's also the one who wants to bring like John Gruden back, which eventually it came like dream come true for him because uh, John Gruden came back from uh, 2018 uh, for the season uh, in Oakland at the time. Uh, he was over at the uh, Rickies for the uh, the event going on when uh, John Gruden just goes in there and just say uh, say hello to uh, uh, fans outside the uh, Rickies. So, uh yeah, uh, but unfortunately, Sheila wasn't there. It was eventually like Raiderhead were back over to the Bay Area to Ricky's to perform. Well, you know, like when uh, Stoner dude just uh, moved to uh, uh, Las Vegas to perform as a drumming career. So, uh, yeah, uh, Sheilhead, uh, if you're watching this right now, uh, I hope you're doing well. And uh, your son, uh, pretty much, I hope you get better. Uh, try to come up with something great creativity for the uh, Raider Nation to entertain. So, uh, can't wait for you to see you, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be waiting for you for my, uh, uh, promise, and, uh, we'll make it, we'll make it as a promise, so. So, enough, enough with that being said, now we're getting into the Raider Reports and Skits, featuring Oakland Raider Savage and Raider Puppet. Uh, they have some amazing content going on recently, uh, over at the, um, in their, uh, YouTube and, uh, social media, so, uh, Raider Puppet, he went on a trip to uh, for a puppet uh, vision for the uh, truck ceremony, uh, the festival thing, I I suppose. Uh, so uh, I mean, Raider Puppet, he has some like amazing uh, trip video that he had uh, recently that he posted. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and check out what he does for uh, this show right here, the skits, and uh, see what's going on for the uh, at the uh, festival. <laughs> hey, Raider Nation, it's Raider Puppet. Stay tuned for episode three of Puppet Vision. Yes, I had the pleasure of going on a road trip to Sturgis, South Dakota for the 81st annual Bike Week Sturges. Stay tuned for the episode. It was crazy. Yes, Raider Puppet.
drift here at Glencoe. It's out of control. I mean, look at this crowd. Look at this place. This is insane. Sturgis, South Dakota, 20, 21. Rainer Buffett in the house. Yeah! Hey, it's Random Puppet. I'm here in Sturgis, South Dakota. I'm here with Tim Wright from Kansas, but down here they call me Opie. Opie! It's Sturgis, South Dakota. What, Opie, what brings you to Sturgis, South Dakota? Just to come here and see all my friends, man. I love my friends here at Glencoe Campground. So, what what happens here at Glencoe? Oh, uh, lots of debauchery you don't, you, I can't tell you about. You just gotta come here and see it for yourself. I need a break. This is unbelievable. They're working me like a hog. Jeez. <laughs> you can't take it. You can't take it. I need, I need a rest. Take me to my trailer. Nighty night, Raider Puppet. <laughs> I hope he gets to sleep well. Uh, well, shout out to uh, David Michaels for creating a new segment for the uh, Puppet Vision episode right here. But uh, yeah, let's move on to uh, Oakland Raider Savage. What he has for this uh, skits, or not skits really, like he created this kind of a video uh, entertaining for uh, all of you Raider Nation. So let's move on and then the next video that we're going to uh, see right now. Goddamn Mexicans love the Raiders. Fuck. That's like the Mexican national team. Goddamn, it sounds Mexican. Hey, the fucking Raiders! The fucking Raiders! Other teams don't sound as Mexican. You never see a Mexican. Hey, the fucking Buccaneers. Yeah, fuck yeah, the Pirates and the Ships. Fuck yeah, I like the fucking Buccaneers. Yeah, Johnny Depp. Fuck yeah. You gotta be, ca you gotta be careful, go. You ever go to an Oakland Raider game? Fuck, you could die. You could die, not get beat up, die. You can't wear somebody else's jersey at a Raider game. You can't be walking around the parking lot, 
outside the Oakland Coliseum, sitting there with a Denver Broncos jersey on. I'm about to come and get stabbed. Hey, what the fuck? The fucking Raiders! What the fuck? It's preseason. This shit don't even count, bro. Hey, fuck you, it's the fucking Raiders! It's a Tim Tebow jersey. It's protected by Christ. It's crazy how you can go down the street, go to a 49er game, completely different fans, you know? God damn. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Raider games, you could die. Raider games, you could die. 49er fans, look, I know you want to be gangster, but it's tough when you're sharing the parking lot with Six Flags. You can't be gangsta and you got powdered sugar on your motherfucking collar and shit. <laughs> you, can wear any, you can wear a Bronco jersey to a 49er game. I mean, the 49er fans will yell at you like they're going to do something, but they ain't going to switch it up at the end. You know, be walking around, hey, Denver! Denver! You for Denver? Yeah, this is my wife. These are my boys. Yeah, we got some bruschetta. We just grew in the garden. Yeah, I got some white wine. My wife just made it. Yeah, welcome, man. Yeah, welcome to Denver. We ski there every summer. We love it, yeah. <laughs> Goddamn. <laughs> 49 fans are pissed. <laughs> Motherfucker, we ain't nice. Oh, yeah, what's up, Raider Nation? You know, this is a very important week this week coming up. It doesn't matter whether it's regular season or preseason. Raiders versus 49ers, yeah. We go over there to their uh, amusement park, parking lot or whatever, you know. Don't let them fool you. They hate that stadium. Yeah, you know, and if you've seen our stadium, you know, we're living nice out there in Vegas. And they might go and try to talk mess, talking about, well, you know, you guys left. It's not the battle of the band. It doesn't matter anymore, you know, because look at, let me say one thing. Did you watch that game uh, this past weekend when the Raiders came down to L.A. and they took care of the Rams? Yeah, the whole stadium was blacked out. Because we still own L.A. just like we still own the Bay. doesn't matter how many. You'd be like, oh, we got five Super Bowls. It doesn't even matter. You know why? Because why do you guys want to be like us? If you guys are so above us, why do you want to be like us for, huh? Just ask that guy. Why do you want to be like us for, huh? So anyways, we might try to go around talking about, you know, quarterback talk and all that. But you know what? If they come out and be like, oh, Trey Lance, Trey Lance, Trey Lance. Lance. What the fuck did I just hear? Lance. Exactly. What is that about? Doesn't even matter. If the rookies out there, we're going to welcome them to the NFL, yeah. So I'm going to leave you with this. To our silver and black. You know what I'm talking about. Scroll up down memory lane right there, yeah. Raiders, baby! This weekend, we take over. Oh, yeah, I dig it.
touchdown! Tim Brown! So many times when the receiver goes in motion, he makes one move, they throw it to him. Monty Montgomery overplays it, and when Tim Brown turns up the sideline, he's wide open. Gannon anticipates, and what a perfect throw. All right, Savage, that's what I'm talking about. Battle of the Bay right here this Sunday. Man, great highlights of the 49ers against Raiders. Raiders trying to beat the Niners off of their butts, so on and so on and so on. And also, like, Tim Brown's amazing. Tim Brown's amazing for the end zone of touchdown. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, uh, moving on for this one segment right here, Raider Memes. Now, we only have four memes like we did in the previous episode. So, we're going to go ahead and check out some of these memes that's something uh, particular or similar. So, uh, now the first one right here for this meme, it says, Raiders fans in the first half, Raiders fans in the second half. Okay, yeah, we see all these uh, black hole fans right there in the section 105 on top, and some of these uh, gay couples in the, uh, I think somewhere at Ricky's, like in the bottom right there in that picture, but I don't know. Uh, for this one, next one, it says, how Raider Nation walks into the uh, work Monday morning. Okay, uh, this is the actor from the, uh, I think the Wolf Gang, I, I don't know what that movie is called, but yeah, it's from the... Uh, uh, he's the actor from the, uh, Titans, like, the boat thing, uh, some of the drama, um, a dramatic film, but I'm not really sure who the actor is, but, uh, forgot his name. Uh, the other one, right here, it says, how Raider fans look when you ask about yesterday's game. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, the guy from the D's Nuts video, he was, uh, responding to someone on the phone, uh, pretty much similar that he just, you know, could that take that joke back in uh, 2013 or 2016, but I'm not really sure. But yeah, that that's hilarious right there. Uh, let's see. Last but not least, right here, this last meme right here for the Raiders, it says, Raiders fans be like, got my game face on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, uh, Toby McGuire, uh, Toby McGuire right there in that picture from Spider-Man, that, that's, that is hilarious, it's from the Spider-Man 3 movie back in, uh, 2007, that is pretty amazing, that, that screenshot right there of, to, uh, Toby McGuire, and speaking of that, you know, they have a new Spider-Man movie coming up around, uh, December, uh, which is called Spider-Man, uh, No Way, uh, Way Home. I think, yeah. So, uh, it's going to be feature uh, Dr. Octopus from the uh, original actor from uh, Spider-Man 2. So, I can't wait for that. What's going to happen on December? So, uh, all right. Pretty much done with the memes. Now, we're moving forward for the last part of the segment called Raider Conversation. It's about time. Now, I my guess, one of the Raider fan who is part of us for a couple years who have worked hard for the Raider Nation in the events and charities. His name is Power Raider. I'm so glad and thankful for honoring him to come on to my show. Uh, what we're going to see, what's, uh, what's going to uh, learn about him. So, uh, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the call of Power Raider. All right, Raider Nation. Uh, my guest today is that this Raider fan right here... Uh, who has done many things for a couple years, and he is known for his costume known as the one of the heroic superheroes that he was based on and getting influenced by. So my guest today is Power Raider. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, Raider Art, for um, having me in your show. Uh, uh, I feel honored to be part of your show. I mean, I hear great things about it, and, and it, it's building up the momentum. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I know you have done some of the, a lot of a charity work that you did for a couple of years, and you know, creating this heroic, iconic power raider in your mind. But before we get into all that kind of a stuff, let's find out how you became a raider fan. See, it was a funny story. I had a uh, when I was like ten or nine years old. Uh, I grew up, you know, I would be straight true. I grew up in poverty. My, my family and I, we would shop a lot all over, you know, Goodwill, secondhand stores. And uh, one time my my mom um, scored, you know, we always loved sports. We always loved football and 
my mom and my dad would always, you know, watch soccer and football at the time. And that was like the thing to do over the weekends, you know, watch TV and all that. And one time my mom scored on uh, on a thrift store. I believe it was called Chalk, it was the one with the teddy bear. And uh, she scored on four starter jackets. They were um, jackets, um, you know, football jackets. There was something that we couldn't even afford, and my mom scored on them. I remember one was Miami Dolphins, one was Cowboys, the other one was Jaguars, and I don't remember the other one. But anyhow, I thought I was just cool, you know, because I had a starter jacket, you know, with above my pay grade, pay, you know, <laughs> above, you know, what I, I, you know, what I was used to living. And um, I was wearing a, a cowboy jacket, needless to say, you know. And one time I went to a family function and somebody called me a cowgirl. And being the impulsive person I was back then, you know, I got in a fight. <laughs> what? And my, my, my mom and my dad, you know, they disciplined me. They asked me, well, what happened and everything. And it's because I told them, look, I thought I was cool because I had a starter jacket, a football jacket. And I was called a cowgirl. And I, I didn't back down, and I punched the guy in the face. It was a kid, you know. I was, like, 10 years old. And, um, give me one second. Okay. And a, a call was coming in. And so, um, from that point on, you know, I didn't want to wear that jacket anymore because, you know, I, I didn't want to be called names or anything like that. And, you know, growing up during the 90s and all that, you hear a lot of the West Coast music and all that. And uh, I grew up in the city of Bell, you know, in South LA. A lot of my buddies and I, we would listen to, you know, Tupac, Ice Cube, NWA. A lot of the cool, you know, the, the, the cool, you know, rap music that you actually could listen to and there was a meaning behind it. And, you know, there was something about Ice Cube and everything else. And I was like, man, you know what? They always would sport the Raiders. And nobody would punk these yeah. guys, you know, cause they were always wearing stuff like that, and my my dad, you know, he always would love the Raiders too. You know, he grew he he saw when the Raiders won the Super Bowls and all that, and so he I remember he had a hat and all that, and I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna be a Raider fan, you know. And so since then, you know, I just been a fan since I would say ten years old. You know, I know a lot of people say, oh, I was born a Raider fan and everything, but it's kind of hard to say that because when one is born, you know. You don't really understand sports until I would say like you're maybe seven or six, you know. <laughs> and once you start playing like Madden football and all that, I'm like, all right, cool. Then you know, <laughs> you know what teams to choose and all that. And so, yeah, that's how I became a, you know, a Raider fan. You know, a diehard Raider fan. I'm I'm tatted up with Raider stuff in my arms. I mean, uh, and and since then, that's how I how I grew up. I just started watching. I love the sport. I, I played um, high school football for Garfield High School in East LA uh, for two years. Tried out for, you know, college ball, but my work schedule was just getting too much in the way, and I didn't continue doing that. You know, you know being young, I was 19 years old, and I, I, um, I had my own house and everything, so I had to pay the bills. And so, you know, it was just a lot of, a lot of different things. In, right? And so football... You know, the, the sport of football, I couldn't play, but I still kept watching it. And so uh, I embraced the Raiders, and then I've just been watching it. And that's pretty much it. That's how I became a Raider fan. You know, there was, an, uh, that was a turning point, I would say. You know, I love, we love sports, but the minute, you know, you know, so I, um, I got punked because wearing a, a Cowboys jacket, and I didn't know better. I was young, you know, and I thought it was cool, you know, because, that, you know, we were able to wear something that was fancy. I thought it was fancy back then because that was better than all the other stuff that we wear, you know. But I was always humble, and that's how I grew up, you know. Yeah, pretty amazing that, pretty amazing that, like, how much you uh, put into all this kind of a stuff when you hear, like, this kind of Ice Cube stuff and NWA and all that kind of a stuff. So uh, for this question right here, uh, who are your favorite legendary players and the current ones today? Well, right now, uh, I see. I, I I play defensive end, so off the top of my head, you know, I could already name, you know, um, Greg Townsend, and I could name uh, Howie Long. I love them because you know that's who, who I would watch, you know, and I would see, hey, how would he get to the quarterback right away, you know? And I wanted to be that person, you know. Um, and so those were my all-time favorites, and I already got to meet both of them already. Actually, um, Greg Townsend's here in, in Long Beach, and, you know, I've seen him a couple of times here and also at other events and at my friend's house. 
So um, him, him and I, we might be connecting and working together in the future. Uh, Howie Long, I actually got to meet him at the club access area, you know, in, in Oakland. Uh, it was funny because um, I was tailgating and my buddy uh, Rick, which a lot of people know I hang around with my buddy Rick a lot, he told me, oh. hey, get into the club area as soon as possible because Howie Long is signing. Oh, I didn't and know that. He, yeah, so in the club area, they always have players, alumni players signing all the time. And so this is why club access areas are usually more expensive. And so I've been going to um, the Raider games in Oakland. I was say since 2015. Yeah, I was, uh, since 2015. And uh, I, I was privileged to meet a lot of the Raider al- alumni players. And uh, one of them, you know, um, Howie Long, um, I didn't get to meet him at the signing. Um, I got there too late because I was just partying up too much at the tailgate. Oh. And our seats were right next to the torch. Really? And uh, Yeah, right next to the torch. So uh, I'll share some pictures later on on Facebook and all that. Uh, we have Caddy Corner seats to the tor- torch, and we have the same exact seats for this year's, you know, games and all that. So it was funny because Howie Long doesn't sign for anybody. You know, once he's out, he doesn't sign for anybody. You have to, like, either be in a special event or pay for his autograph, and his autograph's really expensive. But I was there, and he saw something in me that he, before he even walked to the torch, he walked towards me, and he signed my freaking foam helmet I had. <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he saw all the legendaries I had in my freaking helmet, and he's like, wow, this is a good collection. I'm like, because I would go to all the Raider games with my foam helmet, and, and um, I'll post a picture of that one later. And, you know, a lot of people don't recognize me because I was 80 pounds heavier back then. I was about 320, yeah, close to three. 315, 320, I was ranging around there, and, you know, I always had the desire to, hey, man, I want to be like all these other characters, you know, uh, how they get so much community involvement, you know, because I already was doing all the, the 5K, 10K walks, and I was doing those donations, and I was participating, and I'm like, why not be a character, you know, and so I, I thought of some, several things back then, I thought of being like, you know, maybe Dark Mall. Not Darth Maul, I would say, what's that one guy from Lord of the Rings? Um, that oh, old, no. or that guy from King? <laughs> I'm not sure if you watched Lord of the Rings. But no. I, I, I thought of being that villain, and I don't know, or Saruman or something, but, because I love those movies, and I'm like, no, you know, it's going to be too much um, armor to carry and all that, and, and what I want to do, you know, because I already had a mission in my head, what I want to do, impact kids and all that, I'm like, I needed to be a character, that, you know, that, that, that would attract kids, you know? And, you know, I thought of things, I thought of things, I'm like, what did I grow up with that I liked so much back then? You know, and so I remember when I would watch Raider football and I would always watch the Power Rangers, you know? Saturday mornings, I'm like, I have to make sure what happened, you know? And I, I, yeah. can't, stress out, <laughs> I can't stress out how much stress I had back then and when I found out the Green Ranger was bad in the beginning, the first four episodes. And I'm like, no way, you know, and how the Power Rangers were getting defeated. <laughs> it was like, that was like the, the time of my life back then. And so I was like, wow, you know, when that when the light bulb clicked, you know, I'm like, man, you know, I want to be this character and everything. But of course, I was really over, o- overweight, you know, and I'm still considered overweight, but I'm working on losing more weight. Oh, I don't and blame so, you. <laughs> thank you. And so I was like, you know what? Let me be a Power Ranger, you know. I'll be a Power Ranger, but, you know, I thought of names. You know, I thought about the Raider Ranger. I thought of, you know, other, you know, you know, uh, Black Power Ranger, you know, or something like that. And I'm like, nah, you know what, make it simple. And, and Power Ranger came about, you know, I mashed up the two best things I grew up with. And okay. so uh, that's how Power Ranger came to be. And then I'm like, well, what's going to be my email? You know, I'm like, make it creative. Because I figured it's all about marketing, it's all about promoting, and it's all about enrolling people into our lives, you know, bringing, building relationships, and I'm like, something that has a jingle, and something that's going to attract people, I'm like, cool, so I made my email, you know, go, go, Power Raider, you know, what better jingle to have, you know, wow. and so, <laughs> and so um, I did that for my Instagram, I did that for my Twitter, I did it for my TikTok, I did it for my Facebook, and my Facebook like page and all that, so you could find me in everything that says go, go, go Power Raider, you know? And so 
Yeah, it, it's been, you know, a tremendous support. You know, that jingle by itself, you know, just marks itself by itself. And I, I have a lot of people that already started following me. And, I, and I'm truly honored to see where I'm at because I don't even have a, a power rater. And, you know, and I'm building a large following. And I think, I think it's more because people could understand where I'm coming from. And I think it's because I, I love to take pictures. I love to take videos of people. Uh, and, and ultimately just market, you know, Power Rater for who it is, you know, because ultimately the more exposure I could get for Power Rater, the more exposure I could do for my nonprofit organization that I'm doing. That is amazing right there. That persona, like your kind of a character originally is perfect for you. I mean, that's truly amazing that you have to be an original. Thank you, thank you. Now, uh, for this question right here, now, I know some of the people were upset in a couple years that we know that. What was your reaction about the Raiders moving to Las Vegas from Oakland? You know what? As soon as I heard that, I'm like, wow, that's a mid, that's jackpot right there. Because every time I would, because see, I would do a lot of turnaround flights going to Oakland, you know. Being that my kids are, were small and all that, I'm like, I would tell my wife, all right, babe, I'm going to leave this morning but I'm coming back tonight you know and so I would literally leave that morning tailgate and you know get hammered smash whatever you want to call it you know with my buddies and friends and all that and uh cause I knew I didn't have to rent a car I just got on the airport jump on the BART train go straight to the Coliseum drink eat what I want party go to the club my signatures go party after the the, the the game and then get back on the BART train and get to the airport, you know? So it was very convenient, you know? But the thing is that I had to make sure I left at 9 o'clock. That was the last flight out of Oakland. So being that it's now in Las Vegas, the, light, the flights are a lot later. So I love it even better, <laughs> you know? Because Las Vegas has in and out flights going 24-7. I'm like, man, you know what? This is way better for me. The only thing is that I have to always get an Uber now for to get to the places I want to be at. And so this is why I'm like, man, you know what? Eventually, I'm going to start pushing for, you know, campaigning for a monorail to go straight from the airport to the to these key places in Las Vegas, you know? It'll make my life easier and make the life of easier and uh, avoid a lot of traffic, you know, because I would think a monorail from the airport to the stadium will be more efficient and doable for people to, you know, to travel because it's just... We all know the parking's a headache over there, and just to get to the stadium's a headache, and I think that would help out a lot more. Yeah, that that's kind of amazing. You know, people really wanted to be in that Allegiant Stadium, like, really badly. You know, they can't even afford, like, tickets this year. It uh, costs a lot, but hopefully next year it will, might happen uh, when all the fans will come in will be perfect, like, like what they used to in Oakland. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could envision a lot of stuff, you know. I'm not sure if you've been to, like, you know, any of the Disneyland theme parks where you do park hoppers I to did. train. Okay, so you know when you do park hoppers to train, before you get into your next stop, you have to prove that you have a ticket to go into the next theme park? Then I think they should have, like, a monorail stop that shows, hey, prove to us that you have a ticket to the stadium and you could walk straight to the stadium, you know, from the exit of the monorail. You know, that will be a lot more, you know, I would say it was about smart to do something like that and avoid a lot of the, the traffic yeah traffic is kind of hard though but like for me personally now uh for this one uh what do you do for the uh, chari- uh charities when it comes to raider nation or the black hole well i don't belong to the black hole uh but i do support a lot of their events they're doing you know whenever they post uh, something on the flyer on my page i don't mind sharing it up through my my sources and all that uh, when people have, you know, uh, raffles or uh, or they need items donated for an ex- for whatever raffle they need for fundraising for either a cause or somebody's funeral or for kids or whatever, you know, I, I always tell everybody to reach out to me. If I could do it, I'll do it. If I can't, then I'll be straight up, you know. But uh, I would say like 90% of the time I've been able to be uh, helpful or contribute some way, somehow, you know. Um, and so... Uh, I, I'm privileged to have my best friend, you know, uh, Rick, who he actually, uh, if you guys don't know Rick, um, he actually bought all the stores from John Bella's locker room. Oh, you know, yeah. They were, all, all, they were all based over there in Oakland, and um, 
at one point, when was it? I would say in 2001 or 2002. Yeah, uh, John Vela, you know, had John Vela's Raiders locker room or something like that. He got sued by the Raiders, and he got a season and desist order. Oh, yeah. And then what's it called? He got sued again, and he had to shut down. And it was just a coincidence that when he shut down the following year, the Raider image came about, you know, the Raider image store. And so, you know, because John Vela was the only one to have all these Raider memorabilia, the Raider stuff selling, you know, in one unique store. And so... Uh, I mean, I, even though John Vela was an alumni player, you know, uh, I just think like, oh man, that's, that's my stuff. But anyway, uh, Rick uh, was able to, to buy all the items, you know, that got liquidated. And so a lot of these items, I would say like, maybe like 70% of these items, uh, Rick is a very generous person. He helps me out a lot. And these are, a lot of these items are the ones that, I, that, that we donate, you know, and he donates everything on behalf of, run squad or on behalf of Power Raider because he's a very humble person. He does not like to get credit. You know, him and his wife, they're very humble people and I love them to death. They're amazing people and with great hearts and they're the type of people that take the shirt off, you know, just to give it to you, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, John Vell is something special for the uh, Raider Nation a long time ago. I know, like, uh, I've been to, like, Vell's locker room once or, like, next to Ricky's, so that's kind of, like, the little bit member I had, like, as a little kid uh, back in the day, and I did not know is that he got suited by the Raiders for, you know, creating their own store called the Raider Image. Yeah, and, you know, it's funny you mentioned uh, Ricky, because uh, a lot of the items there also, um, um, what's it called, Rick gave a lot you know, to Ricky. <laughs> so I was cool, you know, because Rick introduced me to, to everybody there, you know, when I started going in 2015. And uh, since then, we've just been kicking it off. And it was funny because Rick would, would would give me the club access ticket. He's all like, look, this is the, this is the plan. If we if we win, we don't have to pay for your ticket. If, you, if we lose, you pay for your ticket. <laughs> wow. And so the, the times I would go, I was always lucky that the Raiders uh, would win the game. And uh, but it was twice that I've lost, you know. The, the, and he didn't count one of them because they robbed us that game. And it was against the Cowboys when they measured it with that stupid index card. And so uh, okay. he, uh, Rick goes, you know, you're not going to pay me for this game because we lost because they cheated. <laughs> wow. And so uh, that was one of the games. And I said, nah, we lost against, what was the other game that we lost against? I don't even recall. But anyway, there was only two games that I had to pay for it. You know, I always Rick, Rick is always, you know, helping me out all the time. Um, but you mentioned about the nonprofits, what I do, and all that. And I could I could go in more in details of uh, the nonprofit that I that I created, uh, if you want me to. Yeah, I mean, like, pretty much, you don't have to. I mean, it's up to you. So, I do have a nonprofit that's established. And it's a co- nonprofit corporation, 501c3, in the state of California, to the Secretary of State. And so um, you guys could Google it uh, on business search and you'll see uh, that I'm the CEO of the corporation. Um, I do have Rick as the treasurer, I mean the secretary, and then I have my twin brother as the CFO. And those of you guys don't know that I do have a twin brother. And so um, we, with us three and along with the board members that we have, we actually meet, we're having a meeting later today um, through Zoom. Uh, we're actively, you know, finding ways to how, how we could get these teams involved. Uh, and the teams that we target, you know, Run Squad, what it is, it, it, it's uh, knowledge, education, and awareness of, of foster kids and how to you know, how to find sources to, to adopt, you know, because a lot of people don't know that uh, uh, the avenues or how to adopt or they think adoption is very expensive and uh, they don't really know, you know, there's so many, you know, uh, grants out there that could help you and all that. and and I know all the ins and outs because I was a foster parent for eight years. I fostered oh. my son for eight years, and I, and I adopted my son. And so um, I, and I, my adoption was less than $1,000. And uh, there's so many benefits for being a foster parent and being an adoptive parent. And all these kids are looking for a loving home. And, and statistics show, you know, that uh, foster kids, when they reach the age of seven years old, their chances to get adopted goes from 30% to none, you know? So they're hitting seven years old, and people just want the young kids, you know, to foster or to adopt and all that, you know, because these kids are getting older, 
hormones are coming into play. Teens talk back to adults and all that. And so some parents don't want to deal with this, and these teens get sent out to these orphanages, you know. And these facilities are the facilities that we have been targeting and working with. We were privileged to take uh, uh, some teens already to the boot camp, uh, the Raiders training camp. Okay. And then we were also tra- uh, privileged to take, you know, uh, some of these teams to our first preseason game at Allegiant Stadium, the first time fans in the stand. Uh, we have a lot of donors that are donating their season tickets, you know, to our corporation, you know, uh, and, and obviously it's an incentive for them to, you know, uh, a credit for them to for tax purposes and all that. And I can, you know, just let, FYI, I can only give you credit based on the face value of the ticket not with the ticket itself, <laughs> you know, because some people are like, hey, I'm going to donate these tickets, but they're going like for six, seven hundred bucks. Can I get a tax? No. <laughs> you know, we'll talk to your CPA for more advice about that, but I could only go with black and white, whatever the face value ticket it is, you know, and so I have people donating the tickets, and this preseason game, we had a total of 14 tickets that got donated, you know, and so we had about 10 teams going, and then we had four other members, you know, from different facilities, that we worked uh, in the, the county of Clark County, you know, uh, we worked with uh, already with Vegas Wish Foundation. We already worked with um, the Stanton uh, West House Homeless Shelter for Teens, uh, and then some other uh, Department of Children's Services for Clark County. So we're, we're, we're working with different agencies and local agencies around there, and how it works with these teens is um, it's an incentive program for them, uh, how we propose it for them. So. These teens, as they, 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 they're orphans, you know, uh, they're in these facilities, and they get an incentive uh, to do these extracurricular activities. And how they do it is they work in the tier system. You know, the tier one is they do good in school. Tier two, they're drug-free. Tier three, they do community service, and uh, they help out in the facilities, whatever. And the higher the tier are, the chances for them for doing these extracurricular activities, you know, they get to do, you know. And so we were able to take these. These, these tier four or five teams to these experiences. So it's an incentive for all the other teams that are in that facility to, you know, to be straight in life, you know, be organized and, and, and you know, so, you know, don't lose course, you know. And so uh, we're, we're targeting those teams that are doing great in life. They don't have a mom or dad, and, and they're doing excellent in school, and we're rewarding them by doing that. And so this is what Red Spot's doing, you know. We're, we're, we're also teaming up with a lot of uh, uh, the social workers, who are more actively in uh, fostering or helping out with adoption. And so they'll give anybody who wants or wants to be interested or get information and becoming a foster parent how to get you the advice and how to get involved, you know? Yeah, pretty amazing. But it's kind of hard to, like, get the tickets for the kids. Uh, kind of hard, more or less, that, you know, they have to go through these disease. Yeah, well, what's it called? Um, you know, we've been best with a lot of... Uh, uh, corporations, businesses, and individual season ticket holders that, that have already reached out to me, and they're like, you know what, we want to donate these tickets to you guys, you know, and and so these these kids feel, you know, uh, you know, we have the opportunity to help out these kids, you know, um, and, and these tickets are very expensive, so it's something that the kids might never be able to attend, and this is an opportunity for them to actually be able to go and enjoy these experiences as long as they're fitting in those tiers, you know, as long as we're, re- we're rewarding the right orphan team that's in the foster care system or in the adoption system. I get that. Uh, and speaking of the Allegiant Stadium, what was your great memory going to the 2021 summer kickoff where I see you for the very first time? Uh, so, uh, the, the, what's it called? Uh, are you talking about the event that happened in Madeira? Well, in Bakersfield. Or, in Bakersfield, there you go. Uh, I would say meeting everybody. It was so slam uh, packing there. I got to I got to meet you for the first time, so that was cool, you know. And so we took pictures and all that. I would say the fact that the artists were so humble and they wanted all the super fans, everybody, get on stage with them. You know, it, it, the highlight wasn't on them. The highlight was on the whole Raider Nation. And I thought that was super. Cool, you know, because I'm like, ah, oh, cool, man. You know, these <laughs> artists are like calling us up and to be on stage. I mean, that that, that was cool, you know, because that shows a lot from the characters that, that are people that are singing and all that. Because a lot of these singers, you know, they want the attention, and I respect that, you know, because they work so hard for it. But for the fact that they opened that opportunity for all of us, you know, I'm like, oh, that was cool. You know, that was a highlight 
you know, and, and not to mention, you know, having Max Crosby there, um, and, and I would say having all the little kids, you know, all the, every, I don't know how many pictures I took, it was countless, you know, uh, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, every time you'll see me, you know, if I have a sticker, if I patch, you know, a little kid asking that, I'm going to give it to them, you know, I'm I do. always, always giving something to the kids. You know, I'm always loaded to every event with at least a minimum 1,000 stickers. <laughs> and just because, you know, it's a way for me to, to surprise these kids. And at the same time, it's a marketing opportunity, you know, like I mentioned, you know, to market Power Reader. But it's more because of the mission I have behind Power Reader and, and the opportunity to have Run Squad to be exposed more, you know? Yeah, I mean, I got to meet uh, Max Crosby for the first time over at the uh, Bakersfield for the uh, summer kickoff. I got an autograph for my like my helmet, and uh, I give my uh, training cars to uh, one of his managers to give it to him. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, I met uh, Max Crosby at the Blackout event at Fullerton. So uh, I met him, Brian Edwards, Alex Ingold, and Trayvon Muller. Uh, yeah, uh, what's it called at the Blackout event? Uh, so that that was pretty cool. You know, they to have four players over there. And so I, I didn't uh, purchase a VIP at the summer kickoff because I already met Max Crosby. So many people that haven't met him and had the opportunity to meet him because I didn't want to buy the ticket and take it, take that experience away from somebody else, you know, because I am I already met him. <laughs> oh, yeah, that that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, I hope to see him again, like maybe in the future, or I don't know. Yeah, he, he, he's... He's building it, you know. He, he, I'm excited for the season. The defensive ends are going to really kick butt this year, you know. And so I think we're going to pressure, have that that pressure we were needed for for these quarterbacks, you know, because we were giving the quarterbacks way too much time, you know, to throw the balls and all that. And I think with the edge rushers that we have, we're, we're definitely going to hurt someone. <laughs> I don't, I don't wish that on somebody, but I think we're going to hurt their dreams <laughs> that they won't be able to make the playoffs or something. Because that's what we want. We, we want to create nightmares, like you know, uh, Gruden said. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. And speaking of that, what are you going to think about the Raiders this season? Like, who are you going to uh, be for, like the offense or defense? I really think we have the deep threats. Um, uh, we have a lot of uh, wide receivers, and I know they doubled up a lot on Darren Waller last year, and sometimes tripled. And this is why um, Aguilar was doing so great because they would leave him open, and so he was always catching the bombs and all that because they were always putting doubles or triples on Waller. And so I was uh, I was excited that Waller broke the record and all that, you know, because I'm like, man, every every single play I was watching, I'm like. They're doubling on him. They're doubling. And they're going to stop him. But Aguilar was wide open, and we were able to to win uh, uh, some key games. You know, uh, I love that victory. You know, that that, that game winning that we had last year against the Jets. So that was cool. You know, the last two minutes, or what was the last two minutes, where we turned around and won the game. So that was cool. Uh, our defense, I think, are, is going to step up. I mean, there's these two preseason games I've been seeing. That everybody's hungry to be on that that roster. You know, and so. I think by the end of this month, I think they got to cut it down to 80-something people or something like that. And so um, we'll see who gets cut, you know, uh, by the end of this week and all that. But everybody's playing with their heart, and I, I'm excited, you know, because everybody's hungry to make the roster. Oh, definitely, definitely. Now, uh, to close this off, uh, any advice to the younger generations or uh, current ones today? I would say, you know, no, no. No matter how big, you know, you get, always be humble, you know, because in the end, we all get buried in the same ground and we get leveled in the same ground. You know, everybody that known me since day one for being Power Raider, I'm still the same guy. You know, I'm the, I'm very cool. You'll never see me bad-mouthing anybody. You'll never see me talk trash to anybody. You know, I, in fact, if there is a disconnection with anybody out there, I always embrace them, you know, or, or give them the opportunity to get to know me more, you know, because... You know, uh, being a character sometimes, you know, you might bump heads with people, and but it, it takes a big, big man to actually, you know, say, hey, you know what, what did I do wrong, or how can I make myself better? You know, my glass is always halfway full because I always want to make sure I'm learning, you know, and I always take constructive criticism, you know, you know, openly, you know, and so if I drop the ball somewhere, you know, and this is for everybody out there listening, if I drop the ball anywhere, please reach out to me. 
you know, let me know where I'm dropping the ball. I'm human too, you know, but, it, you know, I don't know everything. And so as long as we stay humble and we stay with the open mind, uh, this, that's the advice I would give anybody and the, uh, and the younger generation. You know what? I, I always know, you know, uh, to treat everybody respectfully because uh, you might not know who that person might be in the future, you know, because uh, that person might be your boss later. <laughs> I've seen it several times, you know, especially in the banking industry because that's what I work. You know, where, where people don't get along, and I'm like, man, you know, that person's your boss. I'm like, wow. <laughs> and so I'm uh, fortunate enough that I've always been a cool, humble guy all the time. Yeah, pretty much. You now, uh, um, before I let you go, uh, any promotions like social media or any websites that uh, people can find you? Yes. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok, and on Facebook at Go Go Power Raider. So it's Power Raider together. And it's two R's, all right, because a lot of people put it power and Raider and they share the same R. No, it's two R's. <laughs> and um, you'll be able to see uh, where I'm going to be at uh, and what we're doing. We do have uh, some major events coming up uh, that I won't disclose yet because I, I'm having a, a meeting precisely this tonight with my members of what we, what we want to do and uh, how we're going to promote it and all that. Um, if you need any information regarding Run Squad, you could email info at runsquad.org or support at runsquad.org. Any one of those emails, you know, one of our, our board members will be able to contact you and help you out, you know, um, because I know as it's growing bigger and bigger, people are, 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 are wanting, how can I get involved? Or, um, you know, I, I love what you're doing. How can I contribute? And X, Y, Z, you know, and so those are the emails you could reach out to info at runsquad.org or support at runsquad.org. Um, and I do have other, uh, other emails for my other members, but I won't disclose those, you know, those are the primary emails out there, but thank you Art, for having me in your show. I appreciate the time, love and support and everything you're doing. Thank you so much. We'll look forward for your uh, stuff, and uh, hopefully we'll meet each other again in the future. Definitely. I'll, I'll be at the home opener, so if you're going to be over there, I'll see you over there. Well, not this year, though. No, I, there's no plans for me right now at the moment. Okay. Boom. I respect that. You know, uh, but any other events, that, um, I do plan to uh, have a big event next year with Run Squad and uh, I'll, I'll keep you on the loop with that and I would love for you to help me out promote it once I announce it. Maybe. I'll, I'll find somewhere like some of the events or I have to contact uh, Mob Boss for that. Cool, cool. Thank you so much for, our, uh, for everything you do, Art. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. God bless, brother. Goodbye. All right, Raider Nation, that was Power Raider right there. Yeah, like he said, being positive more for the people, younger generations, and so on. You know, you never know what he's going to do next. You know, all these Raider Nations is going to do for the events and charities. So now uh, it's time for me to wrap up. And uh, before I let you go, make sure you hit the like, comment, and subscribe below. Uh, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Facebook, it's at RaiderR21. Um... Twitter, it's at Raider Art. Uh, no, 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 no. Wait, I, I, my mistake. Uh, uh, Facebook, it's at Raider Art Productions. My mistake right there on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, it's at Raider Art Twenty One, and on Instagram, which I don't even use, it's um at Raider Art Dash Twenty One. Those are the only three ins uh social media that I have for me personally that. Every Raider fans I hooked up with, and so on. And you can, you can, like I said, you can also give me a call right here in this number. It's two zero nine eight zero nine zero one nine five, or leave us a voicemail and uh, send a text, and I'll share it to you on my next show, which will give you a promise as much as possible as I can. So uh, until then, Raider Nation, I'm out. Thank you so much for watching this uh, video. Uh, more updates coming soon. So uh, uh, the 49ers, yeah, as this Sunday. Uh, can't wait for that. It's over at the uh, Santa Clara, over at the Bay Area, where orig uh, originally that uh, Raiders come from Oakland. Uh, so, yeah, can't wait for what, what's going to do next and, and so on. And uh, regular season is about to start for the Ravens on next month on September. So, can't wait. So, until then, Raider Nation, uh, peace out. And, you know, peace and love and positivity. Uh, stay safe and have a damn great one.